welcome to this updated video on Ring Engineering's Rail Pro Control System. It's been a few years since I've done a video, and so I'd like to take a few minutes now and update you on some of the new things that Rail Pro has come out with and some of the new features. On the table in front of me are several of Rail Pro's products, uh, the first of which is the controller, which remains the same size and shape as the original controller that was uh, made back in around 2011 or so. This controller uh, now is the HC2 model. It is uh, updated internally with more storage, quicker processor, uh, and a little bit more capability. But same uh, size, touch screen here, as well as a manual knob. There is a charging port on the side uh, in order to charge, and a USB port here in order to connect to the computer. There is an updated model of this called the HC2B, and this uh, no longer has the charging port on the side. Uh, instead, the charging and computer transfer are done through the USB cord on the other side. New in RailPro's lineup is the PWR56, their uh, power supply for their uh, for the track. There used to be a larger model of this, the PWR75. It was a large brick. This is much smaller, much lighter. Each um, power supply that is RailPro uh, powered has a repeater functionality, meaning that uh, each one of these will act as a repeater to boost the radio signal from the controller, as well as provide different paths for that radio signal to get to the locomotives. The locomotive module is now this size as compared to the original one, which was this size. So about 30% smaller, same width as before. Previously, the old one only had a single 9-pin plug with a separate wire out here to run to speakers. Now, the locomotive modules have a 9-pin plug as well as a separate 6-pin plug that goes on the back that is included with each module. And the 6-pin plug allows for a total of 6 function outputs, an input, as well as 2 speaker wires. Also new from RailPro is the CI1 computer module. This is a USB interface device that allows you to plug into your computer and then from here you can use uh, this as well as free RailPro software in order to control trains uh, just the same as you would with the HC2 controller. Uh, these CI1 modules are very inexpensive and this is a great way to get into RailPro if you're not wanting to uh, spend a lot of money on a controller just yet. Um, these do have all the functionality that a controller does. The only issue is, is that you'll be stuck at a computer rather than walking around the room with a controller. But I do highly recommend that you get one of these regardless of whether or not you're new to RailPro. These are very handy to load. Um, sounds, lights, uh, programs, things like that, rather than draining the batteries inside of your controller. Okay, now I'm going to show you some of the features that are found on the HC2 and HC2B with the updated software. Clicking here on adjust settings, you can see the software version. I'm running 2.02 .02 at the moment. If you click on tools, there's a new button here, clear active loco list. This will clear the memory in the controller of which uh, locomotives um, it has recently controlled. Clicking here on the software update, the button here at the top is now different. Um, makes a little bit more sense. Uh, whenever you are downloading anything from your computer to the controller, you're going to push that button right there and that's going to initiate the download. Going back to the main page here, if you click over here at locomotives, this is where things get much different. Um, Initially, when you first push on the locomotive tab, it will pull up the six most recently used products. Um, and in this case, you can see I have locomotives as well as uh, one of my uh, power supplies. Um, and if you want to select something else, you can click, uh, click uh, next page and that will take you to all of your locomotives that are on the controller. The other way that you can select now is this little button here, loco list. So rather than you know tabbing through lots of pages, if you have lots of locomotives, you can click right here on that one, and you can scroll using the wheel to select whatever locomotive that you want. And uh, it's relatively fast that way. So if you have a large fleet, then that's probably the way to go. All right, let's talk about some of the new features that are available for locomotives. 
Um, here on the locomotive page you can see a few different things. Uh, one, the forward and reverse button has been moved to the upper left hand side rather than the upper right. That is to make it so if you're using this controller one-handed you can touch up here with your thumb and reverse the direction without having to look at it. Okay. The speed control button has been moved to the upper right hand side that shows you how fast the locomotive is going um, and specifically now it shows you how much power is applied to the locomotive. You'll notice up here there is uh, a little symbol of a small train above the, uh, the picture of the locomotive itself. I'll get back to that here in just a second. Clicking on the um, locomotive setup tab, you uh, now will notice that you can scroll through pages in order to adjust any setting that you want to adjust. Um, there is a new page here, uh, speed tables. This allows you to uh, change uh, the speed table just like you would in a DCC locomotive and this is for when you are using a real pro locomotive in DCC mode so that you can consist it to other uh, DCC locomotives. This is the DCC page here. Um, clicking on that tab enables DCC and you can select what, uh, what address you want it to be found at. Uh, going back to the locomotive page now Let's talk about that train symbol up there at the top. Um, that is the load setting. This new button here is a new function and what it does is it allows you to set the simulated load that the locomotive is experiencing from 0 to 100 percent adjusted with the knob. So at 0 percent the locomotive will experience no load um, so there won't be uh, high momentum settings. Um, at a, a very high load up at 100 percent there will be significant momentum. There will also be uh, changes in the sound as well, simulating a locomotive that is under heavy load. The other new function is the brake fun function right here. Pressing and holding that button, you'll see a little red number pop up on the upper right hand side, and that is the brake percentage. So you can kind of feather the brake in and out if you would like to. This is still a feature that's under development. Alright, so let's talk about the load settings. If you click here on the load tab, you can then adjust the load to whatever you want. We'll take it down to zero first. You can see there is no little train icon above the locomotive, so this has no load. So, what does that look like? Almost instant movement on the locomotive, and turning it all the way down stops it almost immediately. You can see on this tab here, there are now actually two numbers when you're using the load setting. The upper number is the power applied to the locomotive, and the lower number is the actual speed of the locomotive itself. Alright, so now let's take the load up to 50%, or thereabouts. And watch what happens here. So you can see that that lower number lags behind the upper number now, and there is significant momentum. I have it at 0% power applied to the locomotive, and it's coasting, simulating a decently heavy train behind it. All right, so now let's go all the way up to 100% load. Now I will demonstrate the new braking function. I have the locomotive set at 50% load, so turning it up, we'll get the locomotive moving. And then shutting the prime mover down, we'll hold down the brake button. There you go. So that can be used in switching ops to make things a little bit more interesting. The higher the load that you have on the locomotive, the longer it's going to take to brake. Uh, the brake functions can also be um, adjusted if you are adjusting the 
uh, base momentum, acceleration, and deceleration of the locomotive. If you have a higher deceleration set on the locomotive, then it will take longer to brake. This can make switching operations much more fun and much more involved. So how does the load function work in consists or multiple unit lash-ups? Uh, the answer is, is it works very well. I have a three unit lash-up here and I have the uh, load set to about 50%. You can see the three locomotives all set up there. And let's give it a listen. Here's a lash up of three locomotives with load set all the way at 100%. Listen to how they respond. One of the biggest changes to RealPro has been the uh, software that is now available that is for free on Ring Engineering's website and you don't have to be a RealPro user to download it and try it. The uh, biggest one is the RealPro Assistant, which uh, is the portal that allows you to download anything from Ring Engineering's website, from sounds to lighting effects to product programs. Uh, you can also uh, load your own sounds if you have any of those that you would like to load. You can load uh, your own pictures if you've created any of those, your own lighting effects. You can actually create your own lighting effects as well inside this program, which is a, a fairly uh, robust thing to do. It's a little difficult to learn, but certainly possible. Uh, the other program is the HC Simulator, and that looks like a miniature hand controller, and that uh, is what is uh, allows you to control locomotives and products from your computer. You plug in the CI1 module to your USB drive, and it turns your computer into a radio control device. You can select any locomotives or RealPro products just like you normally would and control them directly from the computer. You can also use this to load sounds, files, and things like that without draining your batteries. For a quick demonstration on the HC Simulator and the CI1, you'll see here that I have the CI1 plugged into my laptop and the HC Simulator pulled up. And you'll see that this HC Simulator will be able to do everything that a normal HC will do. So my thoughts on all the updates and changes to RailPro have been very positive. Uh, RailPro has come a long ways uh, from when it was first introduced years ago. I was one of the early adopters of it, probably a year or two after it came out, and I've been with it ever since and, and really enjoyed it. I've always wanted things to continue to improve, and the new changes have certainly done that. Uh, the sounds especially are are certainly top-notch. Uh, the new Ultimate Series sounds that were recorded from uh, actual locomotives under load through all the notches and transitions and things uh, are just fantastic and better um, than uh, most any other offering that I've heard from uh, any other manufacturer. So I've been very pleased with that. I would like to see more sounds, and I'd like to see them uh, quicker than what they've been coming out, but I've, I've been pleased with what we have so far. I do enjoy the other functionality that's come out as well with the, the uh, 
with the momentum and load simulation, braking, and those types of things. That has been a lot of fun. Uh, I do enjoy uh, the uh, software and the ability to load things myself and to create those changes and, and uh, have that flexibility. That has been a nice thing. Um, and uh, just Rail Pro in general has been a good thing. It uh, The basic premise remains the same, even from when it was first started. With no CVs, uh, everything radio controlled, uh, power coming from whatever source you'd like it to come from, allowing you to do uh, real time automatic load sharing, uh, as well as uh, real time feedback from the locomotives, and just ease of use in general. It's it's been a fun system, and I've really enjoyed my time with it, and I look forward to hopefully many more updates and uh, and new functionality being added in the future. Thank you for watching and hopefully you found this uh, enjoyable and hopefully informative.